We're now at the top of page four of the NIFAR suggested form of purchase and sale agreement. The very top, it says that if the seller has agreed to any repairs, they have to be done by appropriately licensed persons. Sometimes that's no more than an occupational license for a handyman. But if it's electrical, mechanical, plumbing, roofing, then it would require a proper state license. And it says that um, the repairs don't have to be done until 10 days after the buyer's loan has been approved. Sometimes the seller's willing to make the repairs no matter what. They know that if this buyer doesn't buy, the next buyer's inspector is going to find the same thing. But sometimes what this buyer's asked for may be a little picky and the seller's willing to do it, but they don't want to do it until the loan's been approved. And that, that's taken into account at the top of page four. Line 168 says, of course, the buyer still has the right to do a walkthrough um, right before the closing. Uh, just above that, the buyer has the right within three days after the seller's done the repairs to in inspect the repairs to make sure they were done right. They get their home inspector back out there. Now we're to the title evidence part. When do we get the title search? We who do the closing. It says in line 174 that if you leave it blank, it would be at least 10 days before closing. In my opinion, that's satisfactory in almost all cases. Once in a while, you may get a buyer who says, yeah, I'd like to know 15 days before that title's clear. That's okay. We can get that done. Just fill in 15. But 10 is the satisfactory number of days in most occurrences. And then line 180 talks about the municipal lien search. The municipal lien search shows two things that our title search doesn't show. One, we don't care about. It shows if the seller is current in the payment of their utilities. We don't care about that because JEA and Florida Power and Beaches, they don't lien the property. The buyer can have the utilities turned on even if the seller's delinquent on paying their utility bills. The other we do care about. It shows if there are any permits that were pulled but not finalized. It'll say if there were open permits or expired permits. If they're old and expired, the county would probably say nothing needs to be done. But if they're more recent and it and expired, then they're going to have to be closed out. That means that you're going to have to get that contractor hired, or if they're out of business, another one, if it's a pool, if it's a roof, and have the city inspect and close out the permit. I'm seeing more and more people want the municipal lien search. It wasn't that common prior to Hurricane Matthew and Irma. It's more common now. Those searches cost about $85 to $100. Next, line 183, we're using a new term, survey map. In my experience, our buyers and sellers sometimes mixed up the words appraisal and survey. So from now on in this contract, we're going to call it a survey map, and that's what they're actually called, and that'll help the parties understand we're not talking about the appraisal. So within what period of time should we who do the closings have the survey, a new one or a copy? And again, it's that same 10 days, and that's satisfactory in almost all cases. Notice the three boxes in paragraph five. Most buyers want a new survey map. New survey maps cost about $300 if it's in a subdivision and there's no swimming pool on the property, maybe $325 or $50 if there's a pool, and then if it's a very large piece with acreage, we'd have to get an estimate from the surveyor. Sometimes the buyer's willing to accept the seller's copy, and we can title insure that, and the lenders will go along with that if that copy shows all of the improvements, that is, if the seller's not added a driveway or not added a room or a pool or added a covered porch, if any of those things were done, we're going to need a new survey because we can't title insure it. The other thing the seller has to swear to at closing when we attach a copy of the survey to their affidavit is that the neighboring adjoining properties to the side, to the back, also have not added anything since the property that's being sold was surveyed. Line 193 says, if the lender or the buyer requires a flood elevation certificate by the surveyor in order to get flood insurance or show it's not needed, that's going to be a buyer charge. Finally, in paragraph six, beginning line 194, we talk about when will we close. So we've done things in chronological order. The binder's paid, you apply for the loan, you do the inspections, we get the title search, and then when do we close? Notice the three boxes. One says within so many days, 15 if left blank, after loan approval. Let's talk about how we count days in this contract. If everybody signed the contract today and everybody had a copy today, 
then day one is tomorrow because it says days after. We count all days. We count intervening days. We count intervening Sundays, Saturdays, and intervening holidays. However, we say later, and I'll point it out, that if the last day of performance, other than the acceptance of the offer, falls on a Saturday, Sunday, or federal holiday, then we go to the next day that is not a Saturday, Sunday, or federal holiday. So 15 days after loan approval seems good in a lot of cases. Why 15? Why not three days after? Well, remember, the seller has 10 days after loan approval to do the repairs, and the buyer gets to inspect within three days. Also, a lot of times, you don't want us to order the survey map until the buyer's been approved to hold down the cost. The second box is my preferred box. That's for a specific date. When you make the offer on behalf of the buyer, I suggest you look at a calendar, pick something that's about 40 days off, that's a weekday, and put that in. The reason I like that box best is that you and I and the lender and the surveyor and the insurance company and the inspectors are going to look at that paragraph to see when is the closing. And we don't have to count days on our fingers. We don't have to go look at when was the contract signed if we have a specific date there. The third box is best for a cash sale. You can say, let's close within 10 days after the contract is signed. We could, in theory, close within three or four days. Depends on whether we need an HOA or condo association estoppel letter. Do we need a mortgage payoff letter? But in a pinch, we could get a title search in about three days. Um, weather permitting, we might be able to get a survey map within three days if they want to close that quickly. But notice in bold line 201, that closing date is not set in concrete. It says, unless extended by other conditions. And now we're about to talk about some other conditions when we get to the next page. That concludes the discussion on page four.